Welcome rice growers to another edition of the Rice Facts audio series, where we give you quick, timely updates on topics relating to the success of your rice crop. I'm Anna Jewell from Rice Extension, and in today's episode, we will be discussing head emergence and the timing of flowering in VO71 crops. Recently, we've received a lot of feedback regarding the tardiness of VO71 to show its heads and reach flowering. And on the ground, we're seeing this in your paddocks too. It's not an isolated query. We are finding this from the north to the south and east to west. So today, I want to address a few of the varietal traits that VO71 shows and some of the agronomic influences that have affected this delay during this season. So there is a big difference between how VO71 presents its panicles compared to Rizik or Sherpa. VO71's panicles are generally less proud of the canopy and emerge lower from the flag leaf compared to Rizik, which has heads up above the flag leaf. So since the panicles are lower in the canopy, it's not until you examine your crops closely that you find there are a lot of heads emerging, but they're far less obvious. In the past, we have noticed that VO71 also stays greener for longer while filling grain, which can cause issues with drainage decisions. However, both these traits are positive influences on grain quality and yield. Secondly, Brian Dunn and his team at the New South Wales DPI have been following the phenology of 65 commercial paddocks and have found that the time between PI and flowering is 35 days on average this year compared to the longer term average of 31 days. We did, particularly in the south, experience some cool overnight minimum temperatures in January, which slows any varieties development out of the boot. Thirdly, high nitrogen rates, pre-permanent water, have a greater impact on delaying flowering than PI nitrogen applications. In an experiment at Griffiths this year, this conducted by Brian Dunn, pre-permanent water nitrogen rates of 326 kilos of urea and 391 kilos per hectare of urea had a 34 day period between PI and mid flowering and pre permanent nitrogen rates of 522 kilos and 652 kilos per hectare of urea had a 36 and 37 day period between PI and mid flowering. So, the more urea you apply up front, the more likely you are to extend the period between PI and flowering. And the nitrogen you apply at PI has less of an impact on phenological development. Finally, there have been some cold minimum temperatures adding to the delay in development. However, daytime temperatures have been reasonable, which will have provided some protection against cold induced sterility. High water of 25 centimetres or more would have been very beneficial this season too. So overall, it has been a challenging season at times in respect to establishment and weather conditions. Nevertheless, we are sitting on about average degree days and temperatures with most crops reaching their phenological development milestones in the correct window. So just to summarise and recap, VO71 presents its panicles differently to Rizik. The timing between PI and flowering is averaging 35 days this season compared to the longer term average of 31 days. Pre-permanent water nitrogen has a greater impact on delaying flowering than PI nitrogen. And there have been some cold minimum temperatures adding to the delay of panicle emergence from the boot and high water will have been very beneficial this year. If you're chasing more information, please reach out to us, the Rice Extension team. All more resources can be found on the Rice Extension website and in New South Wales DPI Growing Guides. 
And as always, consult with your trusted advisor. All the best for the season.